Hi, my name is Robin Wong and I want to share five unusual and sneaky camera tricks that can be useful in some situations. Let's do this. I know, I know a lot of people are complaining, hey Robin, you're only talking about Olympus cameras. I hear you. Therefore, the tips and tricks that I'm about to share in this video, they are all applicable to all camera systems. Some of these tips will benefit your photography workflow. Some of them have nothing to do with photography at all, but can make a difference in some tight situations in real life. Every situation is different. Every photographer is different. You have to be the one to decide whether these tips are applicable to you or not, and what works best for your situation. Tip number one, use your camera to record audio. Sometimes in certain situations, when you do want audio recording as evidence, when you whip up your smartphone and start pressing on the screen to activate the app and record the voice, people know that you are recording and sometimes voice recording is not permitted. In such situations, if you want to get away, if you have your camera with you, you can just turn the camera inside your camera bag without showing anyone. By now, I hope that you know where the power on and off switch is and just hit the record button and let the camera run in the back and you can record the voice that's going on in the surrounding for quite a long duration of time. I find this to be quite sneaky, but it can be really helpful and you have that audio evidence that you need in case you need to use them for whatever reasons. Tip number two. Make use of the dual card slots. I know, I know this is only applicable if your camera has dual card slots. If you do have that, make sure that each slot has a memory card. Now, if you run into a situation where you're taking photographs, but somehow photography is not permitted, and you run into trouble with the security, and the security people are asking you to delete the photographs on the spot. All you have to do is just delete the card that doesn't have the photographs that you want to keep. You can show the screen to the security, hey, I'm erasing all photographs. And after that, you can review the photograph and say, hey, it's empty, there's nothing left. But of course, the security people wouldn't know that you have the second card, which still have all the photographs that you want to keep intact. This has happened to me. I'm not gonna tell you why I want to take photographs when photography is not permitted. I just need to do my job. I don't have to justify this to anyone. I'm sure if you're running in the situation, you have your reasons as well that dual card slots can come in really handy. Tip number three, leave the lens cap at home. I know I'm gonna get some backlash for this, but do bear with me. Reason number one to do this is so that you don't lose the lens cap anymore by leaving it at home, it is safe. You don't have to put it on and off or you put it in some pockets in your bag. You may accidentally drop it. So by leaving it at home, you're very sure that the cap is there. Now, reason number two is more applicable. I am a street photographer. Every single moment counts. As I take the camera out from the back and turn it on, I want the camera to be instantly ready for me to capture that moment that is happening in front of me. By removing the lens cap that's one additional step that is sufficient to cause me to miss that critical moment. It is slowing me down. Now you don't have to agree with me if you're not a street photographer or if you're not doing anything fast action or fast paced. You take your time, let's say you're a landscape photographer, still life photographer or portrait photographer and putting on and off the lens cap doesn't affect your photography workflow, then fine, carry the lens cap. To me, like I said, Every single moment counts. By not having that one step to take off the lens cap, it can save me some critical shots. Now, I know that the purpose of the lens cap is to protect the front element of the lens from being scratched. If you have a lens filter or the protection UV filter in front of the lens, that is sufficient to do the job. Tip number four, 
Remove the tripod collar when it's not in use. I've noticed that a lot of people who use long lenses, especially the 70 to 200 from other brands, or if you're using Olympus, the Foley 250 Pro, a lot of people leave the tripod collar on the lens even when they don't use monopods or tripods. By removing the tripod collar, you're shaving off about 25% of the weight. That is a lot. It will definitely improve your handling with the lens since it is much lighter and it's more comfortable to handhold for a longer duration of time. Of course, if you are using monopods and tripod, please use the tripod collar and mount it onto the tripod collar itself instead of the camera. That's a safer way to use. If you don't do that, you may damage the tripod mount on the camera, especially if you're using long lenses like 40 to 150 Pro or 300 Pro. However, for hand-holding situation, which you will use most of the time, it doesn't make sense to have the tripod collar on the lens at all times. I understand. Some people actually told me, Robin, I didn't know that I can remove the tripod collar. Or Robin, I don't know how to remove the tripod collar. So here is a quick guide on how you can remove the tripod collar on Olympus lenses, especially the 40 to 150 Pro or the 300 Pro. Here I have the Olympus Foley 250 Pro with the tripod collar attached. To remove the tripod collar, step number one, remove the lens from the camera body. Step number two, unscrew. There's one screw here, you see that? Unscrew that. And once it is loose, then rotate this uh, mount part of the tripod collar all the way to the top of the lens where you can see there is the red line here. Once you're here, then you see that the tripod collar is free and you remove it by sliding it out from the back of the lens. Ta-da! Now that the tripod collar is removed. And finally, tip number five. Use the camera's Wi-Fi connection to the smartphone to sneakily take photographs without people realizing. All you have to do is connect the camera to the smartphone using the Wi-Fi and launch the Olympus or iShare app. Then you can use your smartphone to control the camera. Then you can point the camera at any direction that you want away from you. You don't even have to look at that direction. Most people will suspect you're taking their photographs if you're looking at them with your camera pointing at them. Your camera can point at them, but you can look at the opposite direction or away from them and they don't know that you are taking photographs of them and you can compose your shots with your smartphone through the screen and you can use the smartphone to have full control of the camera. I know this can be very useful in some situations where you know photography is not allowed and yet you still need to take photographs. Again, I'm not going to question you, I'm not going to ask you to justify your, your actions. Sometimes we do what we have to do and this Wi-Fi to smartphone connection using the smartphone to take photographs to control the camera remotely can be a good solution. That's all the unconventional camera tricks that I have to share in this video. If you found any of them useful, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal account. I'll put the links in the descriptions below on how you can do that. Any small contribution can help me to continue making videos like this and publish them right here. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to this channel if you have not already done so. And I'll definitely see you again in the next one. Until then, please go out and take more photographs if you can. And always stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.